We just got done at the vet. Loki got a clean bill of health. He also got a new one year rabies vaccine. And apparently it has to be within, like you have to do the vaccine like 20 to 30 days before entering Guatemala. Whoops. He wrote the date 20 days ago. Yeah, so hopefully we're fine to get into the country. We don't have to wait here for three or four weeks. Although it's really nice here. I mean, True. It wouldn't be bad, but yeah. we're just on a timeline to get to Panama. Right. So that would be a setback, and then we'd have to hurry thereafter. Yeah. But we got it all taken care of, and it was around 20 US dollars for a rabies vaccine and to get the health certificate. Not so bad. cheap. I have to stop for a minute. The city is at like over 7,000 feet elevation. There's a lot of steps. We got lucky this pink tag. It says Vacunación Antirabica 2022 Mexico. Secretaria de Salud, Uso Exclusivo. <laughs> Shady spot there. Good job, buddy. We just ordered some tacos and posh, which is the artisanal liqueur of the region. We're in Chiapas. We are in San Cristobal. We left the dog in the van. Nice, cool temperatures here. And we're going to do a free walking tour to learn about the city. The free walking tour of San Cristobal started at about 9 a.m. And we all met in this beautiful courtyard in front of the old iglesia. There's a pretty large group of tourists that gathered. So we split up into three groups to follow three different guides on three different routes through the city. And we learned a ton of fascinating history of the city. And we saw a lot of really cool sights on they our way. An incredible, beautiful pieces and unique. So they have also black jade and also this one, for example, is Seiba, which is a holy tree that represented Maya civilization. Our tour guide Daniel led us through the streets of San Cristobal. We saw the local markets, a few old churches that were several hundred years old. This place was really interesting. All of the clothing that you see here was divided by the neighborhood from which it comes. All of the textile patterns have unique identifiers that a trained eye can tell where they were made. This beautiful old church was unused for a time, but it was recently reopened to the public and it's absolutely gorgeous. The intricacy of all of the work, the details inside and outside was just incredible. All of the walls inside were gold plated and a lot of intricately carved wood everywhere. It's maybe a little bit tacky in my opinion, but it was still really beautiful and clearly a ton of work. The market in San Cristobal was absolute mayhem, which a lot of these markets tend to be, but it was a lot of fun to walk around, and we got some fruits and vegetables on our way. Okay. There's a lot of interesting graffiti around the town, and a lot of it has a very political backstory and hidden meaning. Our tour guide explained a lot of this to us. I think it was a different staircase because it was a staircase down the other side too. Uh, that is our only personal is like a liquid with 80% of this is 45. Don't be scared, just a little piece, no? Asana. 
Jessica and Malata. <laughs> In our preparations to get ready to cross the border, I was doing some laundry. And instead of paying to have it done, I washed the clothes by hand and hung them to dry. But I did it too late. It was yesterday afternoon and it gets cold at night and the sun's not out today. So our clothes are still damp. Sale. Here's a pile of wet laundry. More hanging in our shower. <laughs> Depending on where we stay today, maybe we can find a place to hang them outside again. Otherwise, it's just going to be all over the van. We left our spot at our RV park in San Cristobal to make our way east towards the Guatemala border. Unfortunately, we hit a roadblock just outside of Comitán. It was a peaceful political protest, but the road was blocked and the bypass roads through the mountains, we couldn't confirm whether they were easily passable or not. So we turned around and headed back to San Cristobal. We're back where we started, almost three hours later. But we know it's a good spot, so we will try again. Rob just helped me hang the clothesline out there because, as you know, our clothes are still wet. And I literally went to hang them on the line and it started raining. But the sun's out. Hopefully it doesn't last long. I think before we got to Puerto Arvista, at some point the van developed a noise when we hit bumps. So... I don't know what it is. We've looked under the van. We've looked all around in the van. Rob was convinced it was something in the fridge. When you're in the driver's seat, it sounds like it's coming from the refrigerator. But if you're passengering and you listen very closely to the refrigerator, it sounds like it's coming through the floor right beneath or in the vicinity of the refrigerator. So now Rob has checked like a bunch of different bolts and nuts and screws. That might be loose. I checked like all of the suspension hardware. Everything is tight. Even stuff that I've never touched since the van was brand new is well, tight. We can show you our testing method. So at first I thought that I couldn't replicate the sound by bouncing the van, but maybe I just wasn't listening close enough. Or maybe I wasn't bouncing hard enough. So I hear it. It's knocking. Maybe you can video underneath. Okay, so we successfully confirmed that the noise is inside the passenger side rear shock absorber. But the whole time that we were trying to figure it out, there was like clearly a huge party going on in town. So we're gonna go take a walk and see what's good with that. But it might be over. It sounds like there's no music now. We'll find out. In the next video, we are gonna take a different route to get close to the Guatemalan border. So tune in next time to see if we actually make it there.